everything from mastering the pit the door to, to the presentation. And he also has, which I'm going to have him talk about this afterwards. Okay. Very important that, that, that we know this. He also have, has events coming up over the next couple of months in different parts of the country. I know that I'm going to attend the one here. It's a weekend in March. I believe it's the first weekend of March. Again, I'm going to let him bring it up. I'm going to be attending that because, listen, this guy right here, as I mentioned, is one of the most sought after people, trainers in the solar industry and sales industry. So you guys want to make sure that you guys take copious notes. Luckily, this presentation is also being recorded. So you guys want to make sure that you guys are also Text some of your team, get your team on here, okay? Because this guy is considered one of the legends in this industry, one of the best traders in the industry by far, one of the founders of Knockstar University, okay? And so you, some of you guys that went to the Mentor Factory, you guys went there and you guys got a taste of what Mr. Danny Pessy has to say and has to train. So with that being said, I want to do a mic check. I want to see if we got Mr. Danny Pessy on the line. Test, test, test one, two. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, brother. I'm here in blue looking good. So good morning, everyone. I'm here in my biohacking lounge. I've got oxygen being pumped straight into the nose. I've got this blue light that helps against the uh, uh, bad blue light that's coming off my computers. I'm not like a super biohacking nerd. When you're in front of the computer all day, you got to maintain your energy. And the better energy you have, the more likely you can produce and sell and train for your people. So for me, I invest a lot of money into this. I was just uh, doing red light therapy before this. My vibration played getting me ready for this, uh, getting ready for this call. So I've got some really good stuff that I'm going to jam with you guys on. I'm going to leave this on uh, for... Uh, just a test. I've, I usually take off this thing, but um, I want to leave it on just to see if it makes a difference with my cognitive functions, having pure oxygen being pumped into the dome. Joshua, so, so is that okay with you, Josh? Can I leave the oxygen tank on right now? Is that okay, buddy? Looks good, man. I like it. Dude, good to see you, bro. Josh is yeah. a buddy of mine. We've, uh, we've been friends for a... It was like, what, we met, met at SolarCon last year. Is that right? No, yeah, most of the year. Dude, my man, dude. Good to see you, bro. But yeah, I'm really excited to join you guys. So um, I've been doing this job for about 16 years now. I uh, first sold my first solar deal. I was a setter for my first couple of years. Uh, my first solar deal that was closed was in 2016. I was a part of Vivint's, uh, Vivint's uh, setter closer program that they started up. Basically, the alarm people would go out and knock on doors and then a solar closer would come in and close the solar deal. So for me, um, that's when I first started. I was really, really good at alarms. So alarms was like the big thing before solar took in. Um, I'm one of the most all-time leading alarms sold door-to-door. -door. I sold over 4,000, um, right around 4,000 accounts door-to-door. -door. Um, I've been on commission only my whole life, and then I transitioned to solar full-time in 2020. The first year uh, that I did it, my downline did 300 installs, and then the second year was 2,100 installs in my direct downline. Um, made a couple mil off that, so that was really cool. So basically, um, I'm having to let people into as well as co-host who's who's the are, uh, jc are you the co-host yeah yeah I, i'll take care of it bro. okay perfect it. cool i just didn't yeah. know i thought i had to do that so good that'll make it easier so the the things that i talk about guys like i've done this like this has been my whole life um you know this is my first job that i've ever had and so there's a lot of things i want to teach you so today's subject i want you guys all to take out notes physical paper and pen if you are driving I promise you this is definitely worth pulling over and taking some notes for. Um, this is some of the best content that I've you know, been developing. And my whole goal for you guys today is to give you a taste. And I do have a couple of live in-person events that I'm promoting for, obviously. And my whole idea here is if I give you enough nuggets, it's enough to influence you guys to buy tickets. Tickets are cheap. They're like two, 200, 300 bucks. And it's going to be a two-day workshop on the mindset, vision, mindset, and techniques that it's going to take you to sell and close more solar deals. So I'm basically taking my whole life's work and condensing into a two-day workshop where you're going to be able to fill out a workbook like this. And uh, it's going to go into detail. It's going to teach you guys what to think about, teach you guys basically how to set more appointments, how to frame the set. And then I'm going to give you a 10-point process that I do to close more deals. So um, like I said, so that's the big thing that um, I'm, I'm talking about today. It's in LA, Phoenix, Dallas, Orlando, uh, Salt Lake City, and in Utah. So if you're in none of those markets or you're in some of them, hit me up. Uh, my Instagram is where you can find everything at Danny Pessy. 
D-A-N-N-Y-P-E-S-S-Y. I'll put that in the comments right now. So if you do have Instagram, go follow me right now. If you can't make the tour, don't worry about it. I'm always dropping nuggets. Um, I'm one of the keynote speakers at SolarCon, heavily involved with that group. So these, these uh, trainings are really, really good. And I've, you know, I've been to a part of them. I've been to Grant Cardone, all these seminars. And uh, there a lot of them aren't tailored directly to solar. So for me, I really uh, take pride in putting together the most intense two-day workshop that solar's ever seen but wanted to drop that for you guys um and let you guys see if you like what i'm talking about maybe you guys attempt to show up and join but i'm telling you that's like what i'm really really excited about so but today i'm going to talk about two things and then i'm going to leave it open for q and a's and so basically i want to talk a little bit about helping you guys change and then after that i want to give you guys some content that you can help um reimagine what you can do when you're in the close to get customers to say yes. And so there's a few things that are more effective than others that when you're starting to sell that you need to hype on more. But the thing is, is we I really want to get you guys sold on doing things to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over four key principles on what it takes to change. And then I want you guys to start taking notes on this. It's very important to take physical pen and paper um, notes. I learned that from Grant Cardone at his 10X Con like 10 years ago is if you're taking it on your cell phone, you guys are all busy, you're entrepreneurs, you have family, people are going to be distracting you like effing crazy. So um, just like me, I didn't put my phone on do not disturb, just got a call, took me out of the moment. So that's why I don't take notes on my phone or my computer, because uh, it pulls you out and you can't focus. So what I want to do is, is basically train you guys on a couple, four reasons for change. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out one of the reasons and then I want you guys to start filling in some of the blanks. And this is going to help push you guys to, to start making a difference. If you're not happy with the income that you're making, if you're not happy with your solar career, this is going to give you a couple little bullet points to help get you guys really sold on change and making an improvement in your life. And so the first one, the four reasons why people change is they heard enough that, that they have to. So for you, what is some problems that you're dealing with in life right now that are forcing you to want to change? Do you not have enough money? Do you not have enough uh, time with your family? What are some problems that you're hurting and dealing with right now that need you to change? So for example, for me, perfect example. Um, this weekend, I was in Florida and uh, my uh, my uncle passed away so we were doing a funeral for him and the whole time I was just getting blown up and I was on my cell phone and so then I realized after I talked to my family they're like bro like your uncle just died and the whole time you're on your phone texting and that put in a lot of pain in my body and I was like damn dude I didn't realize like bro I'm just working 24 7 and didn't even wasn't even there for my uncle's funeral and I'm like man that sucks so for me I'm going to start making some changes to my life choices so that I can actually be there for important times. So for me, that was a really big pain that I need to start changing that I'm not happy with, that I can't even go to a family member's funeral without being on my phone all the time. That's not right. So for me, that was a big thing that I'm not there enough for my family. And that's what I need to change and start handling situations so I'm not there 24-7. So I'd like to get a couple of uh, feedback from a few people on here. What is a big reason why you need to change and why you need to be successful at this job and put in more solar panels? I want to hear something from you guys so we can start talking about some big things in your life that you need to do to make a change and why this is so important for you to change at this job. So let's open it up. Who'd like to share? And if you don't feel comfortable, don't worry. Just sit back, relax. I'll share, guys. Um, this is Joanne Harris from Lancaster, California. So I'm, I'm sure all the parents on the call can relate. I have children. I want to provide them the best living that I can. So I absolutely need to be successful and kill it so I can create a legacy for them instead of living paycheck to paycheck. Man, I love that. Great share, Joanne. You know, if you guys like that, put a heart up there. Give her some love. It's cool to hear these type of stories, man. We all do work for different things in life, and it's cool to see that. You know, people are doing this for their kids, doing this for their family. There's so many different ways you can, you know, utilize this job. And it's cool to see that. So great share. Who else would like to share a big reason why they have to change right now? Why now to do this? I'd like to share George Green here in Atlanta. Not enough money. 
Hey. hey. Amen. So What's yeah, that? not enough money. A hundred percent. So if you literally run out of money, is that going to cause you enough pain to get up and do something about it? Exactly right. Yeah. And if you did have money, what would you do with that, George? Immediately, I invest in my business to expand my business to market to more people so I can talk to more homeowners immediately. 100%. And then with that money, it starts doubling, tripling. Great share, George. No cool. doubt. Yeah, because you guys investing in your business, you can buy more leads. You can get more people enrolled in your organization and start making passive income. Because the thing is, is how can you help somebody if you're not helping yourself? So that's why it's so important to really dial that in. So let's go into the next one, okay? When they learn enough that they want to. This is the second reason why people change and why you do these calls is when they learn enough, they want to change. So for you guys, I want to give you after this, I'm going to give you some more information to help you close more deals, but it's good to lay the foundation that when they learn enough that they want to. The thing is, is you can't expect more income than you currently have with the same bag of tricks that you're using. I was just in Atlanta the other day, uh, Saturday training people, and I had all these reps saying, hey, I want to double my income. And it's like, well, if you could double your income with the current skill set that you have, you'd have done it already. So the thing is, is you need to continue to invest in your education so that you can learn more, so you can earn more. So what are you doing to learn more? So besides joining these calls, what are you guys currently spending money on to increase your capabilities to sell more solar deals? What other sources of education are you guys doing? Let's hear from a couple of people. Are you reading books? Are you going to seminars? What are some things that you're doing right now to invest to increase your learning? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Luis Cervantes with Power Solar. Uh, well, the thing that I'm doing is I'm, I'm sticking around people that are that have made over a million dollars in a solar. Uh, I have a great mentor, JC Rangel, and he's just been teaching me, you know, a, a, you know, he teaches me a lot and I'm just sticking to it. And, you know, I've been blessed and I just I've been seeing my income increase, you know, times five. So very blessed to have JC Rangel as a mentor. We keep it pushing and here we are. Dude, there you go. Great share. So getting around proximity is power, guys. Write this down. You can't soar with the eagles if you're scratching with the turkeys. <laughs> you cannot soar with the eagles if you're scratching with the turkeys. So if you're around a bunch of broke people, guess what? You're going to be broke. You want to start getting better, start joining these calls, start getting around more successful and influential people because your think starts to change. Your think starts to change. You got stinking thinking, as my boy Kenny Brooks would say. 16K, Grant Cardone, guys, investing. Yes, I put a ton of money into all of these. This last year, I spent $150,000 on personal education. So guys, putting more time and spending money on education is very, very key. Because the thing is, is you got to get around successful people. If you want to get around Grant Cardone, you got to spend a lot of money. Okay. So learn enough that you want to change. The next is when they see enough, there is, they are inspired to change. Number three, people change when they see enough, they're inspired to. I'd like to get two or three people to share here their experience selling solar with power or whatever company that you're with, that you've had a life-changing experience happen to you. For example, for me, when I went full-time solar, this is a, an example of, of how this is uh, a, a life-changing situation for me. When I see enough, I'm inspired to do more. I so went out for a full two weeks and I sold five solar deals and got them all installed. I sold 10 five got installed. And then I got a check for like 50 grand. Okay. So I got that check for 50 K. I took that. I put it down on a house. The house was $630,000 in 12 months. The house is now worth 800,000. 
And so I actually have, I'm sitting on around $170,000 in equity in my home. So that was all from two hard weeks of going out and really busting my butt. I went 10 hours a day, knocking doors, got deals and got them installed. And so I took that 50K and turned it into 170. So for me, when I saw that, I got inspired to change in even more. So I want to hear some from you guys, an experience of where you took money and you've put into something and you've seen a fantastic return, whether it's helping your kids go to college, whether it's you buying a better car, doing something. Let's get a couple testimonies from people that have seen something and from this job and now are making a difference. Who'd like to share? I'll go. Speak Frank. Hey, how you doing? Um, just grateful for power. Thank you, Danny, for uh, teaching us. Um, when I started solar, um, I had just gotten out of a rehab home, uh, 18 years of being an alcoholic. I went into a rehab home. I also came from the alarm industry, ADT. Yeah. Um, I was living in a sober living house and I was taking the bus while I was um, learning how to do solar. And um, Gerardo, my mentor, the one that brought me into the business, um, he showed me how to get these electric bills. Um, I didn't do anything my first couple of months, but I was uh, going on appointments. It wasn't until I signed up my buddy, um, Salvador, and I got his M2 that I was able to just put a little bit more time into solar. I ended up signing up a client in March or in the end of February that allowed me to go full time in March. Well, from March to October, I did 25 deals. What? Uh, door knocking, yeah. So um, I was able to get a new car, move out of the sober living house, and now I'm full time, just, um, just, just trying to, just trying to, you know, provide for my family. God, dang, Frank, guys, did you hear that? Riding a bus, to selling 25 deals. Getting out of sober living. Oh my God, Frank, is that a dude? That's impressive, man. Way to freaking that's, go. That's all God, you know? Dude, that a boy, Frank. Wow, guys, dude. So now you guys are seeing Frank do it, right? None of you guys are in sober living right now. And if you are, perfect. Follow Frank's lead. Way to freaking go, dude. God dang. Well, let's hear one more, another story of someone in the same situation as you that's gotten a win out of this job. Doesn't have to be monetarily, but something you did for your son, your kids, your family. What's something yeah, that because I'll, of this I'll, job? I'll go ahead. Oscar, hit it, baby. Yeah, so, um, you know, I don't know if uh, you guys probably can't hear it. My microphone probably drowns it out, but I'm sitting across from my daughter playing Minecraft right now while I'm listening to you guys. Um, so that alone right there means a lot to me. Uh, I came from an alarm background as well. I've been, you know, I did alarms for over a decade. I was a salaried member of management right before I did solar. And the eye-opening experience for me is, you know, I've been doing uh, alarms and security here in my town uh, for years. And I know everybody, you know, every business in town has my service. They started asking me when I was going to start doing solar. Yeah. Um, so that for me actually was my eye-opening experience. You know, for, unfortunately I was tied down, you know, I had a non-compete clause, but you know, I had to let that go basically to, you know, see the uh, grass is greener on the other side. Sometimes you have to make that sacrifice in order to uh, take that next step forward. Dude, 100%, man. That's funny. Yeah, because I came from the alarm background, too. So uh, I, I obviously just mentioned that. But yeah, man, when your clients start telling you like, bro, what's going on? Like, why are you still selling alarms? And uh, that was like what it was for me. Like I was doing security full time and then I started training these solar reps and, you know, security, you get capped out on income. If you're personally selling, you max out around two, 300 grand a year. And then I was getting some of these college kids selling solar, making half a mil buying coaching programs like nobody's business. And I'm like, bro, there's something going on here. So realizing that if you don't innovate, you'll die. And so I innovated and I've been all out, you know, balling out on the solar side. And it's been a life-changing experience, especially from alarms. If you're making five, 600 bucks a sale to four or 5,000 and saving customers money, it's fantastic. So hearing that, you know, amazing. And then next guys, the, the fourth and the big reason why people change is when they receive enough 
they are able to. When they receive enough, they're able to change. So what it means by that is when they receive enough money, they can get out of their current situation. So um, what Frank just said was he received enough money where he can get out of the sober living home, buy his own home, and go full-time with this job. So for you guys, it's very important to start visualizing what you're going to do after you start becoming successful. Because you can't hit a target you can't see. So let's imagine I'm waving a magic wand over all of you today. And then you get $100,000 for solar. What are you guys going to do with it? What's your next play? You got $100,000 in your account right now. What are you going to do with it? So I'd like to hear some shares. If you got 100K in your account, what do you guys want to do? What is your next play? This is the part where people don't really put enough time into thinking. You got it. Boom. You check your account. Damn, 100K. What is your next move? I'd like to share about that. The next mental event in Downey, California, I'll be sitting in the front row. Boom. Okay, in the back. Cash or on your account? Are you you pulling out cash and just holding flexing on everybody, George, or what? No, man. I said when I hit that 100K, that's exactly what I'll be doing at Mentor Factory in Downey, California. That's with right. the real crew, the real team members. That's right. That's what I see for me with that 100K, invested in myself. That's right. Putting it back into yourself. Awesome. Let's hear a few more. What are some other plays that we're going to be doing once you have that in your account? What's the next move? Hey, Danny Ramsey here. So I would definitely reinvest back into the business, invest into my CRMs, in, uh, into leads and uh, marketing, and invest into real estate, mm. property investment. Love it. Perfect. Real estate. What else? Let's hear some from people we haven't heard from before. You got the money in the account. Boom. What's the play? We get some people talking about real estate. What other things are we talking about? What really gets you lit, lit up? Ah, well. me, for, me personally, uh, Danny, what I'd be doing is, which is what I'm already doing, is buying four units, right? You know, in 2023 or 2024, I'm definitely buying two or three sets of four units, renting them out, maybe Airbnb, but uh, investing in real estate. So that's why for the last two and a half years, we've been going really hard at this business. <clears throat> because when I started, I was actually in a the worst financial situation I've been in in 15 years. Mm -hmm. When I told my wife, give me three months, I'm going to get us out of this hole in three months. And I started door knocking, visiting the new homeowner list. And so now, you know, last year I had the, one of my biggest years that I've ever had in, you know, in my career period. Right. So, uh, so yeah, but investing in real estate for units particularly. Oh, awesome. And guys, the reason why it's good to have a plan, obviously I don't need to sell you on it, but hopefully you understand that the better plan that you have and you start thinking about what you're doing with your money is, is then now all the money starts becoming attracted to you. And so that's why having a good, good ideal general plan of what to do with it, visualizing it. Cause the thing is guys make it hundred K and solar is not that hard. You just put in, you just put in the hours, you have the right attitude and you start working on your approach. You can do it. The only thing is, is you're not planned out for the next level. And that's, what's really, really key to help getting to that level. So yeah, have a plan. Once you get that hundred K where to put it, Realizing that there's taxes, those are no fun, but roll them into real estate is a great way to continue to put you passive income. What I tell people right now is solar's at a really good spot. It's not always going to be this good. So make sure you're putting money into things that produce cash on, uh, you know, cash returns on it. So like I said, having that plan. So those are the four things. When they heard enough, they have to. Like Frank, hearing him in a rehab home, he didn't like where he's at. He's like, bro, I have to change. Then he learned, he went out to some of these events, started jumping on these calls, and he learned enough where he's like, boom, that I want to change. You're going to want to change once you get new information. I'm going to give you guys four tips here in a second. That's going to help you guys get more information and close. Then when they see enough, they're inspired to. You guys have heard from everybody here on this call 
not from everybody, from the people that shared that they've been able to change their lives in this opportunity. If we jumped on this call every single day and no one was making any money, then you're not going to be inspired to change because no one's doing it. But you're hearing it. What a great story, Frank. And that really builds my conviction, too, into hearing how great this opportunity is. Because if you can tell somebody, hey, I got this guy, Frank, who was in rehab, taking a bus to sell solar. Now he changed his life. He sold 25 deals at 5K a deal. You do the math on that, ladies and gentlemen. Like That's life changing. So that then when you receive enough, you can start changing your life. You can start buying better things. You can start investing into your health. For me, I invested a good amount of money this year in my health. This oxygen machine was freaking 10 grand. Stupid, but it's my health. My uncle just died because he didn't take care of himself. So are you taking consideration your health too as well? So that's a big one, making sure that you're able to receive more so you can uh, start changing as well. So those are the four keys, okay? Next, I'm gonna give you the four levels of a deal. So I'm gonna write this down. Write this one down, four levels of a deal. Now, the four levels of a deal are the four things you need to bring up in any closing situation to get the customer to go forward with you. They're in order from the most important to the least important. And I want you guys to keep a mental tab next time you're closing with the client where you're putting on all of the things that you're doing. Anytime that you talk to a customer, you can put your conversation in any of these four channels. Number one, building value and building pain. Okay, that's number one. When you're selling a deal, if you build enough value and you build enough pain in their current situation, they will change. Just like for you guys, if you have enough pain in your current life, you will change, okay? Next urgency and takeaways. Make sure you leave some spaces on this because I'm going to give you guys some examples and then you're going to start getting some other examples from everybody on the call here that you can use in your next presentation. Next, the third most important is trust and credibility. And fourth is rapport. So rapport with the client. Those are the four levels of most important things you need to do during your close to get a customer to say yes, okay? So number one, you build value and you build the pain. You build the value in solar and you build the pain in their current situation to get them to switch. So I'm gonna give you an example and then I wanna hear a couple things from you guys on what you're doing to build value in solar or building pain, okay? So for me, building value side of things in solar, one of my personal ways of doing it is selling on the idea of a fixed payment every month. Right now, everything in their lives are on a fixed payment. The same payment every month and they can predict it. The only variable rate is their electricity bill that goes up and down. Their utilities, right? So for me, the value for going solar is you don't have to worry about the fluxating rate that continues to increase every single year. That's the value. The pain is asking them questions. Hey, given the fact that the rate goes up 10 to 20, 5, 10, 15% every single year, do you think your income keeps up at the same percentage? Yes or no? Oh, no, it doesn't. So, your nest egg every month gets smaller and smaller and smaller the longer you stick with the utility company. The reason why so many neighbors have gone solar is because they know what they make every month. And unfortunately, they're not getting raises at the same rate the utility company is giving raises. Write that one down, guys. That's a money line. Your neighbor, Joshua... The reason why we, he went solar is his company that he works for isn't giving him enough raises to keep up with the raises in his utility company. So he liked the idea that the solar panel payment was at a fixed rate every single month. So he didn't have to worry about them raising the rates every single month when he couldn't essentially afford it. After five, 10 years of raises, he didn't think his company would keep him at the same level. That's an example of building pain. 
Now, before we're going to give two examples, I want to hear someone give some examples of value in solar. Who here wants to jump off mute and gives me give me a, a value add that they have for solar? When you're talking to a client and you're selling them on solar, or what are you sold on about solar? For me, I'm personally sold on that fixed rate. I like the idea I know exactly what my payments are every month. When you're paycheck to paycheck, you can't afford to have a variable rate. Because if that electricity bill goes from 200 a month to 500, somebody ain't eating. And that scares the crap out of your customers. That variable rate is more scarier than taking a loan out for $50,000. So you have to know what pain your customers are in. So the value that I provide is that I have a fixed rate, so you don't have to worry about the pain of your rates going up. Uh, Big B, had you there for a second. Where'd you go? Jump off mute. Let's hear it. Uh, body, body, is that how you say it? Yeah, Bate. Bate, talk to yeah, me, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I've been, uh, I went solar about a year and a half ago, and uh, after going solar, I bought an electric car, so I currently drive a Tesla as well. So one of the best parts about going solar to me is now I'm able to charge my car from home as well as pay my electric bill for under 200 bucks a month. Well, before I was uh, spending at least seven to $800 a month just in gas alone and not even include my electric bill. So I think I may be saving, you know, maybe close to seven to 8,000 a year uh, right now, just, uh, you know, by going solar. So that's something that I kind of share with my clients. Boom, guys, great example. Not only did he cut out his utility bill, but he cut out his gas payment because he's got an electric car. That's value. Now you're double dipping. Is gas rates going up or down? Up. Definitely you, up. Definitely that's right. Up. That's right. Now you completely cut them out. So then Big B, and a, a, a good thing, a, a little helpful tip for you, if you guys do have solar at your property, and you have a Tesla, take a selfie with yourself, your solar panels, and your car on the back out. And when you're telling that story, pull up that picture and show them that you have it too as well. The reason why that's so important is because a lot of times salespeople are full of crap and your customers are like, yeah, sure. I don't believe it. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you got it. Documentation beats conversation. Write that one down. Documentation beats conversation. So if you actually show documentation of you in front of your Tesla and your house and show them a zero electricity bill from your utility company, that'd be my next slide. You're like, damn, he ain't kidding. That's true. Great value add. And the pain. I also, yeah, no, I also take one of my, a uh, couple of my electric bills and then I show my, uh, $5.44 electric bill payment as well. Yes. Yeah. Documentation beats conversation. Document as much stuff as you can say. Great job, man. Love hearing that. So say, hey, man, I'm not just selling this. I actually am a customer as well. And I was in the same situation as you. Here's me with my Tesla. Here's me with my solar panels. And then here's my electricity bill. I don't believe it. What, what, wait, what? Your electric bill is zero? And you got to charge your Tesla? I'm like, yeah, I'd show you I'd show you a receipt from the gas station, but I haven't bought gas in a year, ma'am. Teslas don't take gas. Documentation beats conversation. Build the value, build the pain. If you can get two for one, huge. And that's a huge thing you guys got to talk about. Guys, so many states are banning the sale of electric vehicles in the future. Solar is free fuel for those vehicles. So one more, one more, uh, no, we don't have time. I'm going to do urgency. Okay. So you got the value, you got the pain. I want all of you guys to put together. This is your homework after this call. Each one of these subjects, I want you to use my story. You can use a uh, body story, anyone else's stories that you can put under your points that you're going to bring up to a customer. Okay. Next is urgency and takeaways. So you need to include urgency in your process for you get your customers to say yes. 
you can spend all day talking about the benefits of solar, but if you don't build urgency and do takeaways at your end of your presentation, your clients are going to say, hey, you know what, Michelle, thank you for the information. I'll get back to you if, if I decide to go forward with it. Who's ever been there before? Raise your hand. Right. So now you need to start pounding them on building urgency and takeaways. Okay. What is urgency? It's statements and facts that get your customer to move forward with the deal rather than waiting till later. These guys do not have the luxury of waiting till later. We know electricity rates are going to continue to go up. The longer that they wait, the more expensive this becomes. Who's noticed an increase in dealer fees in the last six to 12 months? If you gave a presentation to a client last year and they call you up today and say, hey, I want the same deal that I wanted a year ago, could you, if you wanted to, give them that same deal? Yes or no? No. They're stuck. I had a client that I personally worked on that three months ago, they were thinking about it. And then they hit me up and they're like, hey, let's go forward with it. Reran the numbers and it was $6,000 more. So there is a cost of doing nothing. If they spend time and they need to think about it, it's going to cost them more money. Do they know that? No. They think this is like buying a TV at uh, Best Buy. They can go in in two months and it's still going to be 300 bucks. Guys, that's not how it works. Interest rates are changing. The feds are changing the interest rates every other month. It's continuing to go up. And so the longer they wait, the more it's going to cost them. So bringing up different points of urgency. Okay. So bring it up in California right now. Who knows what NEM 3.0 is? California, especially Joanne, she's in Lancaster. She knows about it. So California right now is trying to kill solar. So what they're doing is they're destroying the buyback rate that's going to make selling solar without batteries a very tough situation. So if a client is like, hey, you know what, Joanne, I live in Lancaster. Thank you for the information. I'm going to see how my bills are this summer. And then at the end, let's look at what this looks like for me. What, 200 bucks, right? Okay, cool. Thank you. I'll take the information. Does the customer know what's going on? It doesn't work like that. Guys, what they want today is not what they're going to get tomorrow. They need to get the deal done today. And we need to push them through that process because they will thank us for it. How pissed if you had a family friend who's like, yeah, let me think about it over the summer and they come back to you and you're like, yeah, sorry, bro. You got to buy like five batteries. It's going to cost you another $40,000, $50,000. Are they going to be happy with you? No. That's why you have to bring up this urgency to get them to do it today. We know the rates are going to keep going up. These companies are going to continue to pass laws to make it harder for people to go solar. The best time to get solar was 10 years ago. The second best time to get solar is right now. If you want solar in two months, ain't going to happen, sweetheart. Rates are going to go up. Everything gets more expensive. So that's some of the things that I do to build urgency. I talk about it. Okay? you got to do urgency. you got to start talking about different rates. Talk about NEM 3.0. If you're not selling deals in California, still talk about it. If you got a deal in Texas, hey, ma'am, when do you think that's going to happen over here? What happens in California eventually spreads to the rest of the country. The reason why they're doing this is utility companies get cut out when people go solar. Do you think they enjoy all, losing all these customers left and right? Yes or no? So if you own the utility company, would you put BS laws in place to slow down solar? Yes or no? Yes, you would. So how do you beat the utility company? They're a monopoly. Can you cancel your utility company? No, you're stuck with it. So are you just going to wait and do what they tell you until your bill's seven, 800 bucks a month and you can't afford it anymore? And then you essentially just can't turn on your AC in the summer and at night you got to use candles? You want to get to that point? Do you want to have peace of mind anymore? No. 
We need to get this done before it gets too late. So bringing up this urgency and get them to do it today, guys. Shove this down their throats because they will thank you for it. They don't know. We do. Solar makes sense because of three reasons. It works for the customer, it works for us, and it works for the planet. You more put more solar panels on people's houses, you are doing your part to save this planet. I'm a strong conviction that they need to get this done and they're going to thank you for it. And 10 years from now, they're going to be jumping for joy when their neighbor's paying 1200 bucks for electricity and they're at 200 They need to realize that's what's going to happen if they don't start doing this. Okay? Next, trust and credibility. This is the third level of a deal that you need to bring up on all processes. Trust and credibility. If you guys are doing referrals, you're going to get trust and credibility right off the bat. If it's cold calling, you got to start doing things that um, Big B talked about, showing pictures, talking about other clients that you've sold, having a name list, okay? Sending articles that solar's good. A great example is the Green New Deal. Why would um, the current government administration spend $400 billion on the Green New Deal if it was bad for the planet? So build trust and credibility with your clients. Okay. And hey, last, Dan, just, to, yeah, quick, just to clarify, what's, yep. uh, what's the name list? I think so I know what name, it is. So what you guys should all be doing is all the customers that you have, write down their names. And when you're on a presentation, have that next to you. And so that you can talk to your clients. So Anthony, if you're my customer, I'm selling. I'm going to use my name list to talk about all the other people that I previously sold solar to. So for example, Anthony, I'm selling you, hey, Anthony, um, you know, I'm really excited to, to get you set up. I, I, you know, people have been jumping for joy when it comes to this solar thing. I just got a good friend of mine or my last client, um, Body. He got solar too as well. Here's a picture of him in front of his Tesla and his house with solar panels. And here's a picture of his electricity bill. Before that, he was spending two, 300 bucks a month on his electricity bill, and he had a, an SUV. He was paying 800 bucks for his gas every month. Now, he gets his gas and his electricity bill all for 200 bucks for his solar. For him, he was really excited doing that. So guys, that story right there builds trust and credibility. It also takes care of number two, the urgency because he knows prices are going up. But number one, it builds value and it builds pain. The pain of a thousand bucks a month to live and drive. He can get all of that conduced into one bill for 200 bucks a month. So right there, that's how you build trust and credibility. You have your name list. So you have all the people you've sold. So you can go there and tell stories of all the customers you've set up and their wins. It helps you build that trust and credibility rather than just saying a bunch of stuff like, oh yeah, everybody loves solar, blah, blah, blah. There's techniques that you can utilize. And that's why it's important to use your last clients that you've sold. Okay. Does that make sense, Anthony? That answer your question? Perfect. Cool. And then last is rapport. Rapport is important so that you can have conversation with clients. They feel you're like a normal person. But what ends up happening is people spend more time on rapport than pain and urgency than building, doing takeaways. Just because someone likes you and they're your friend does not mean they're going to spend money with you. You still have to go through these processes. So many times, amateur sales reps spend more money on rapport, more time on rapport than going into the process because they feel uncomfortable and they feel that um, they could get rejected and lose that friendship. So number three was uh, trust and credibility. You build trust and credibility with a name list of different customers that you've sold. And then also sending them articles that state what you're saying is true. So if you're selling somebody in South Carolina and you start talking about NEM 3.0, they don't care about California. But if you send them an article saying that California is going downhill for solar, they're going to believe you. So trust and credibility. And last is rapport. Going into a sales process and, and thinking just because you talk about their kids' soccer games is not going to be enough for them to buy it from you. Okay? You got to make sure. My, my thing is, is when I go into the deal, 
I'll spend about a minute or two before the process, just building rapport, chit-chatting. And then I will not dive into rapport until after they sign the deal. The rapport for me is earned after purchasing the solar from me. I'm not just going to talk to anybody and just start chatting about my family and friends because I have a service to do. I have a duty and obligation to get them solar. If they do not buy solar, I've provided no value to them. And me talking about their family does nothing for anyone. You're only providing value from somebody if they've agreed to sign a contract in exchange for services. If they give up their money for what you're doing, then there's value provided and they're going to be getting it forward. And they're going to be going getting the solar panels for their money. Otherwise, you talking about their family and friends is a waste of time. And eventually you'll get tired of it. I tried it. I would go through these processes and I'd be talking. I'd go door to door. Guys, I've been door to door my whole life. And so I'd find out, you know, building rapport the first five, 10 minutes. But if you do that to 30, 40 people a day, those are hours of time that you're wasting that you could be closing deals. I will give five to 10 minutes after the deal signed building rapport. So they have trust with me. Uh, what do you think about that? I like it, bro. I'm just putting them a little bit closer, but. So, um, you know, I spend five to 10 minutes after the deal's closed building rapport. Okay. So those are the four levels. I'm going to get recap. And then I got a couple minutes for some takeaways or for a couple Q and A's. Number one, if you want to land a deal, the most important thing you need to bring up in your process is build value, build the pain. Number two, urgency and takeaways. Number three, trust and credibility. Number four is rapport. If you do Zoom trainings, you should have these four things sitting on your desk so you can look at them and remind yourself during your process. And if you get a customer that tells you no, go back and look at this list and say, okay, did I build enough value and pain? Did I do any urgencies and takeaways? Did I have the trust and credibility and rapport? And you can self-assess your presentation. I'd leave a house and I'd initially think, okay, where did I lose this deal? Damn it. I didn't build enough urgency. I didn't get them to do it today. And I started assigning myself, okay, boom, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Shoot. Got it. All right. I learned. Can to improve it next time. Okay. You do these four subjects on your deals. Watch what happens, guys. A lot of you are probably doing it naturally, but this is the foundation. These are the fundamentals that you need to have in your presentation to get your customers to say yes. So let's open it up to a couple Q and A's. You guys got a lot of nuggets there. You're doing a lot of these things already, but having them on your notepad, having them written down so that when you're presenting, you know, and you can keep track of it, it's going to be the key to getting more deals. So let's open up for a couple Q and A's. I got five, 10 minutes. I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. Here, I'll go for it. Danny, uh, my name is David from Downey. Um, What's some more pain? Uh, a lot of times I see myself leaning towards the pain of, uh, of ownership versus renting. Uh, maybe some quick, some quick pain for me. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, David, real quick, um, let me ask you a question. I noticed your car is out front. Do you own those or do you rent them? Own. Okay, why, why aren't you renting cars? Because it's too expensive. Got it. Okay. Quick question. Now the TV, I like your TV, man. Quick question. Are you, do you own that TV or do you rent it? Own. Okay, cool. So you didn't go to the rent -a center and buy that TV, did you? No. Okay, cool. And what, what was the main reason why you bought your house, David? Um, so I can own it. Got it. Well, wh why wouldn't you, would you ever go back to renting your house? No. Got it. So if I offered to buy your home and then you rented from me and I took what your mortgage payment was, added an extra 500 bucks so I'd have some cash flow, would you take that deal? Yeah. You would? Or no. No, 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 no. Sorry. Got it. Okay. So if I bought your house from you right now, if I went to my car and wrote you a check for your house mm -hmm. and bought it from you and then you started paying me rent every month, the mortgage, what's your mortgage right now at your house, David? 2500. Okay, so if I bought the house from you and then now I'm your landlord and now your rent is going to be 3000 a month and then I'm going to raise it 10% every single year, would you do that deal? No, bad deal. Got it. So the main reason David why that's a bad deal is the main reason why people are going solar. Question, if you moved into the home today 
and you had the option to rent your power or own it. Hypothetically, because you just told me that you're an owner of those two choices, which would you lean more to? The ownership, if it's cheaper, for sure. Got it. So your neighbor, Josh, was in the same boat. Joshua was like, if I would have moved into the home and knew that I could own my power rather than rent it, he would have done it day one. The only thing is he didn't know that solar now could be paid on a monthly payment plan. The only reason why he didn't do it was because he thought he'd had to pay $50,000, $60,000 up front for solar and he didn't have it hanging around. He thought solar was only for people that had a bunch of money. But what he really liked about what I did for him was that I was able to take his payments and keep them about the same, maybe a little more for solar than his utility company. But what Josh said, and you might agree with, is he realized that his electricity payment is going to continue to go up and up and up every month. And he liked the idea that he could cap the increase at a fixed payment where it would never increase in the future rather than waiting in five years where the solar makes much more sense. And the problem with that is, is if you wait that long, everything is going up. The cost of solar is too as well. So we're going to be in the same spot. So for him, it was a no brainer decision to go forward with it because he liked the idea that the payments were going to be fixed and he owned it rather than renting. Does that make nice sense, story. David? Yes, sir. Perfect. So guys, notice how I overcame that objection and explained it. Not telling David, but I used Joshua as a story to illustrate that process. And then I built the pain by asking him all these questions on stupid things that why would you rent? Asking someone if you rent the car is stupid. Asking someone if they rent their their power is just as stupid. They just don't know it yet. Now, David, hypothetically, if we put the solar on and you had a fixed payment and the rate never increased on you for the rest of your life, and you had it for five years and you were paying the same payment, and all of a sudden your utility company knocked on your door and said, hey, I want you to switch back to renting your power from me. I'll take the panels off. And you can go back to a variable rate where I'll raise the rate on you 5 to 10, 15% every month. And you had no say about it. Would you do that deal? Hell no. Nah. Exactly. So that's why so many people are jumping on board with it because it just makes sense. Thanks, bro. Yep. Great question. Guys, did you notice how I illustrated that? I told the story. I built the pain. Boom. Powerful. Record that, rewatch that story. You can use the same story over and over and over again. Uh, uh, story sell. Don't tell sell. Using those stories to illustrate those images, huge. Got time for like one or two more questions. Great question, David. Danny, I, I have a question. Um, more than anything, it's, can you let them know about your training coming up and where they're at? There's a lot of local people that are asking. Matter of fact, David was one of the guys that brought it up to me first. The guy that just asked you the question. And I also want to let people know, I'm going to put it in the chat right now. This Wednesday at our office, I'm actually here. I just got here. Uh, Mr. Danny Fess is going to be doing a door-to-door boot camp and how to master, master the pitch from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Here's the good news for those of you that are not local. We're going to be Zooming the event. Those of you guys that are local, there's like, seven like, like 12 seats left today they're going to be gone jessica please go ahead and put the link in the description here uh so people can register for that event it's at our training room in the second floor at our downy office remember the, the second floor the, the training room is in the second floor so anyways we're going to put that link there danny could you let us know about the, the california event you got coming up in march and then the rest of the events that you've got please yeah so guys this was just an hour imagine eight hours of day for two days straight, diving into all of these techniques. I told you earlier, this is, you know, I'm selling this thing. So, you know, bear with me. But guys, this stuff is all content. Even if you didn't show up or whatever, this the information I dropped today is enough to make you a ton of money. So the reason why these events are so powerful is we're going to be going in for a full day. I'm going to give you every single objection your customers are going to hit you. And I'm going to give you new word tracks that you can utilize to overcome that. 
I'm going to help you structure the flow of your presentation. And I'm also going to give you new points that you can talk about. Next time you do a Zoom call with the client, you're going to actually have new points that you can help structure your close. If you're just winging your clothes, if you're just winging your appointments, you're doing it wrong. There's a flow and there's a structure to this, guys. If you're frustrated with your results and there's an issue in your closing process, so I'm going to help dial in that closing process for you and help streamline it so you can scale it. So that's the thing, guys. Super easy. I've made it affordable, 300 bucks. The only reason why I'm not doing it for free is because if you don't pay for something, you don't pay attention to it. You got to have skin in the game. So that's the thing. If you don't have skin in the game, then you're not going to go to this event and get your money's worth. And honestly, if I really wanted you guys to double your production, I charge you 10K a day because imagine if I could help you sell two more deals with the information I'm training on you, 5K on average per commission, easily do it. I guarantee you, you show up to this, you're going to find something that's going to help you close a deal. So like I said, guys, it's going to be on March 4th and 5th in Los Angeles, 300 bucks. Uh, 300 bucks a, uh, a ticket. Let me put the uh, link for the tickets on the thing here, but I'd love to take any questions on it. If you guys have any questions about the event or just in general on the process, but you don't have to wing it guys. You pay for information to get new technology so you can close more deals. This has been a phenomenal, uh, a phenomenal training. I literally have spent hours upon hours working on it. So let me get, uh, let me jump in here really quick. And uh, I'm going to put the link in the chat. Hold on. So uh, let me get that there. Uh, hold on a second. I'm going to put the link in the chat right now just so you guys can see this. If you guys want to grab tickets, different set or different markets across the country. Right there, guys, click on the link. If you guys want to get tickets, uh, we're going to be in LA too as well. So uh, for the the training with the um, on Wednesday. So if you guys are in LA, definitely do that. Uh, California, Phoenix. Um, what's up? Oh, dude, there's a virtual conference on the fourth. Dang. Well, come on the fifth. So uh, miss the first day. Come on the fifth. So that's not a big deal. But yeah, I'm telling you guys, it's a lot of good info on there. So before before we wrap up, I've ran over a little bit on time. By thumbs up, throw some fires in the chats. Um, the hours of the trainings are 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. So uh, every day. So if it's only the conference, it's a couple hours come in for that. Guys, throw some chats, throw some fire up. If you got some value today, I, I take it, your time very serious. There was about 100 of us on here. I want to make sure I continue to bring file, value for you guys so you're not just sitting here hearing me talk. So cool. Glad you guys got that. Here's my Instagram. If you guys like nuggets, I'm always dropping free content. Um, with that being said, I think JC's got a training right now. Uh, guys, much love. I appreciate everyone for letting me hop on here and jam. Uh, you guys have a good rest of the day. JC, anything else? No, just want to say thank you very much, Danny. This is the very room that you're going to be at on next week. Uh, excuse me, not next week, this Wednesday. Yes. Right? So make sure you guys register for that, that event this Wednesday. Make sure you guys register for Danny's event. I'm going to be at Danny's event next month. Because I see the value and always growing, guys. So let's make it happen. Danny, once again, thank you very much, brother. Appreciate you. I'll see you Wednesday, brother. Yep. Have a good one, guys. All right, bye. Thanks, bye. guys. Have a good day. Bye, guys.